Welcome to our continuing 2019 educational webinar series. I'm Katherine Short, Partnership Marketing Manager for Health First Healthcare Compliance. At First Healthcare Compliance, we help you with a comprehensive compliance management solution tailored to your business. A hospital, hospital network, healthcare practice of any size, billing company, or skilled nursing facility. As part of our complimentary educational webinar series, we bring you experts from around the country to discuss relevant topics in the healthcare industry. We are so pleased to have Gavin Baker, president of Baker Labs. Gavin has spent his entire career in digital marketing. His firm provides strategies and tactics for clients that create modern website designs, increased website traffic, improved search engine ranking, and high-value leads and patients. Ultimately, clients have increased revenue. He has provided strategies for DeRoyal Incorporated, Premier Surgical, Baptist Eye Surgeons, Premium System EHR, Tennessee Valley Eye Center, Arizona Balanced and Hearing, Hearing Aid, Evansville Surgical Associates, and before starting Baker Labs in 2012, Gavin ran social media marketing at Ruby Tuesday, and he was the CEO of an e-commerce startup. Gavin additionally is an is an instructor at, of social media at the University of Tennessee, and through his teaching, training, and speaking, he has shared with thousands of people about social media, digital marketing, and inbound marketing over the last eight years. Baker Labs uses internet marketing to help healthcare companies increase their new patients and new customers. Baker Labs is a HubSpot partner agency, certified MailChimp expert, and certified story brand guide. A copy of the handouts is available for download on the control panel. Feel free to submit questions in the question box on your control panel during the presentation. We will address questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Your PACOM and PMI CEU certificates will be emailed to you following the broadcast. Your PACOM certificate will come directly from PACOM and your PMI certificate will come from our email. There is no need to request either one. Additional CEU opportunities will be available to BC Advantage members following the live broadcast. See their website for details. A download of the handout is available with a button on the bottom right hand side of your screen. So Gavin, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about um, the, the much covered topic of uh, uh, patient reviews and particularly negative, negative reviews. So excited to get started. So today we're going to talk about how to handle negative patient reviews and then also really talk about how to unlock uh, the five star reviews because it's it's it, you, need, you need both. Um, as mentioned, I'm Gavin, I'm the president of Baker Labs. And this is my contact information. Uh, they'll also be able to slide at the at the end. I'm happy to uh, take any questions you guys have at the end of this uh, as well as in the future. We're going to talk about why patients leave reviews, uh, people leave reviews, and why they're important. Uh, we're going to talk about how to respond and also how not to. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about what you should do next um, in your practice, in your hospital, um, you know, in whatever scenario you are, um, how, how to really move forward. So, but first, let's start here. Um, we're going to answer these kind of questions. What do I do if I get a bad review? <laughs> uh, what about a troll? I mean, everyone's feared, feared uh, trolling uh, on the internet. Um, what about um, responding to them? And then how do I stay HIPAA compliant? Right. Those are the big questions that we get from our uh, our clients. Those are the questions that we get um, throughout uh, the, the course of the work we do. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to stay within of those. And, and the good news is that um, the the answers are pretty simple. Um, the, the bad news is that sometimes they are, they're not always as easy to implement as you think, but this will get you on a really good path for your organization um, of what to do. So first off, when we talk about reviews online, just to set the groundwork, we're talking about people or patients leaving reviews on, on websites like Facebook, Google, your own website, health grades, vitals, WebMD, real self, any of these sites where patients, uh, or people who could be a patient could go to get this information um, about your your practice, about 
um, you, you as a doctor or your staff, uh, depending on what role you are in the, in the organization. And so those are the sites we're talking about. Um, and so uh, we, I won't reference them specifically. Uh, for the most part, they're all relatively uh, the same in terms of how they work, uh, in terms of how a patient leaves, in terms of what tools um, of operation are as it relates to the organization responding or getting uh, reviews, um, you know, uh, your profiles adjusted, those kinds of things. But just to set the groundwork. So starting with, I mean, the first question here is why, why, why reviews? Why do patients leave feedback online? Um, and it starts with this. I mean, 88% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations, which is a study by a company called Bright Local, and um, which is pretty amazing if you think about it, since actually all the majority of online reviews, you don't know who they are. Um, they're completely, they're not anonymous, but they're unknown to you. Uh, to someone viewing it. Uh, and then also 56% of co American consumers investigate a company's reputation before they do business with it. So, um, and that's from Nielsen. And so as you think about this, we've got people going online, we've got patients looking online, um, and they're going to figure out who you are. Uh, what do you do? What do you like? Where are you even? Um, and so they're not always looking for the reviews per se, but the reviews come out. Um, even if someone refers it, even if your best friend says, hey, you." you should go to this ENT or you should go to this clinic, um, you're still most likely gonna Google the clinic's name just to find their phone number. But in the process of that, you may also uh, be exposed to some of the reviews. And so that's why negative reviews are so harmful and why positive reviews are so, so important. Um, beyond just reviews in general, so we've become a review culture in America, right? Amazon reviews, Netflix reviews, I mean, ratings and uh, systems help us make sense of a world we don't know how to, how to order. Um, the, the other side of that is, according to uh, PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, health research, 70%, almost almost 70% of patients read healthcare reviews are influenced in the selection of the next physician, hospital, or medical practice. And this is a stat that I want to pause on for a second, um, because it's, it's it, for those in industry, if you're in the healthcare industry, I mean, you're, 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 you're a practice executive, you're a doctor, you're a medical director, um, a lot of times this is a little astounding to you uh, because you think I would never, um, I, I wouldn't trust a review. Uh, and the problem is that you, you know so much about your industry, you know so much about um, how to make a selection in those, but most people don't. And so they, they lean on something that they can understand, which is reviews. Um, your normal patient who's looking for health uh, information it isn't going to be able to determine or even understand the difference of um, various designations, um, you know, fellowships, residencies, you know, even where you did your studies. Um, you know, they just, they're not going to know that. Um, and so reviews become a, a really easy to understand for, for people to understand and, and review and understand, okay, great. This doctor who has a 4.8 um, seems better than this doctor who has a 3.7. Um, it's not it's completely in some ways unfair, um, but it, uh, but it's it's the reality we live in, and so we need to, to adjust to it. So again, 70% of those, nearly 70% of patients who read healthcare reviews are influenced in their next selection. And so that means they can, they can choose to go to you or they can choose not to go to you based on those reviews. And we'll talk more a little bit uh, later about um, what, what reviews normally have in them and why that might influence their decision. And then last stat is 72%, according to Pew Research, um, revealed that internet users purposely searched online for health-related information or a doctor near them. And so, again, this is Pew Internet. They're saying almost three-fourths three of, of Americans are searching for health-related health information and health, um, health providers. And so just be thinking about that as an understanding. Hold those in. Even though you might not do that, um, they are. And so that's that's the world we're in. Patients are doing this. So how do how do we really work with them and, and, and really create a positive experience for everybody? So one of the pros of reviews um, is that patients use them. I mean, if you have a practice and you want to grow, you need patients um, to keep coming in your doors, both new patients as well as returning patients. Uh, Google loves them, which helps you show up in search results. Uh, and then it helps gain you new patients. The cons of reviews, right? Um, folks we work with, inability to respond, right? You're handcuffed. Um, patients can say anything, even if they may not even be a patient. Anybody can say anything about your practice, um, but you are really limited because of HIPAA 
um, and PHI of what you can actually respond with. Um, the, there are trolls and negative reviews out there. People who leave reviews that are uh, unfair. They're not. They're not true even. Um, and and you have to you now have to deal with those. Uh, and then lastly, this is probably one of the biggest problems. Um, in terms of a con is, is that a, an online review is really not reflective of your education or expertise. Um, and so uh, particularly you see this, we'll see this when there's a transition um, between an, uh, a doctor who's been in practice, we'll say for 15, 15 20 years, um, and they're, they're an expert. They're, they've got thousands and thousands of patients. They've done a phenomenal job actually in clinic, um, but their online presence doesn't reflect that. They've got maybe five or six reviews, just a handful, and half of them are negative. Um, whereas com you, you contrast that to someone who's basically just opened up, they, they've only been uh, actually doing this work for, uh, you know, we'll say two, three years, um, but they might have 30, 40 reviews. And, and that's, and, and the comparison becomes, it's, it's, the, it's, it's this, uh, you know, juxtaposition and saying there's so, so many. Um, and people think they're better. Um, and that's one of the, the cha challenges of them is it, those reviews aren't reflective of how, how good they are um, in terms of their clinical expertise. They're just reflective of, um, honestly, how, how well they've been able to get reviews. Um, but again, patients don't know that. So we, this is, to some degree, a game we just need to, need to play um, if you want your patients to continue to grow. So here is um, how to get five-star reviews. So number one, everyone wants a five-star review, right? You want your rating to be, you know, 4.8 and above. Um, and, and really quickly, the thing that most people don't understand or don't think about is that, and so if you think about a patient experience for a second, if you sit down as a patient or, or any kind of experience, you go somewhere and you have a good experience. It's a, it's a three, four, five-star, we'll say four, four and a half-star experience. You're not necessarily thinking about doing anything after that. You're not probably thinking, hey, I need to go leave a review. You're, I mean, you just had a good experience. It, it was what you expected. It's the negative reviews um, when someone has an experience that doesn't meet their expectations. That's when they leave the negative. So they have the catalyst because they want to share a voice. On the positive side, they're just less likely to do it, um, which is why we need to put some systems in place so that they will leave positive reviews. Because because the, the secret here is, is that there, there really isn't any way to overall prevent negative reviews other than really making some operational uh, changes. And even then, there's still just people out there who you're never going to make them happy. And so they're going to be negative reviews. So the, the key really is, is how do you get more positives consistently coming in so that your negatives get somewhat washed away? Um, and so here you do that. So number one is automating it. Um, and so putting it into a system, um, uh, there, there are tools out there, software tools out there, one we use is called Testimonial Tree, um, where they can connect with your EMR and they will automatically send out feedback, feed, feedback requests, right? So at checkout, um, you know, the, the patient gets checked out and automatically they're getting an email or a text message that says, hey, would you leave a review? Um, and that's going to, and that happens consistently. Um, and, and really that takes the human element out of it. And we're just, we're flooding those patients, um, not with a lot of messages, but we're, we're just consistently sending those messages out. Um, and, and, and you'll see reviews coming in from that. Um, another thing you need to do is you need to ask at a relevant point of care um, and ask a short feedback, right? How many, how many times have you gotten, I know this has happened to me, uh, you, you get on a website or you get, you, you get checking out somewhere and they're like, hey, will you take our 17 minute survey? Well, no. I, I don't want to take a 17 minute survey and chances are you don't either or your patients don't. So um, we want to make it quick. We want to make it easy. Um, you know, we want enough information that makes it relevant uh, for you and for them. Um, but we, we don't want to ask, you know, uh, a ton of questions and, and really the longer the questionnaire, uh, the better information you get, but the less information, the less of them you'll get filled out. Um, and then also, um, depending on what type of practice you are and where you are, um, you, you may want to be able to use surveys to get MIPS activity credit. Um, and so um, if you need to do that, there are some other steps to take um, beyond just having reviews. Um, but this is reviews and surveys are an option, uh, specifically surveys are an option uh, for, for MIPS. Um, and so that, that's really important to, to some practices um, as they are 
really trying to tr trying to trying to increase their numbers on those sides of things. Um, and then lastly, testimonials and online reviews grow referrals and, and it will boost your online presence. And so on the right side of the screen, you can see um, what this might look like on a phone, right? Just kind of ask a couple. It's a, it's a basically a five star review and a patient will pick you know how many reviews they have. Um, and so they might say it was a four and then they leave it information and, and then it asks them to leave a review that prompts them to then leave a review at, the, uh, at one of those review sites we talked about like health grades or Google. Um, the secret here is, and the question we get a lot is, well, if we do this, is that just gonna increase our negative reviews? And, and I mean, the short answer is maybe, but most likely not, because what happens is this, the soft, the systems, and there's number number out there, but they all work essentially the same way. When you prompt the patient feedback, put up five stars, and they hit, and you set your threshold. Let's just say they hit two. Well, they hit two, and instead of it forwarding them to Google to, to place that review, it then basically captures that, and 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 it doesn't prevent them from leaving a review. It just doesn't prompt them to go share it. Uh, and so you kind of capture that and you're able to solve the problem. Um, so you still, the patient still gives the give feedback, they still get to get heard, um, but they're not necessarily broadcasting it with the world. Um, and that's probably more of a three star, honestly, a two or one star. I mean, they're gonna be pretty frustrated, pretty mad. Something happened uh, that they didn't expect. Um, and so most likely they're gonna go tell the world anyway. Uh, they're gonna go, they're gonna go blast, um, blast you and get their voice heard one way or another. Um, and most likely they're not gonna pick up the phone, they're not gonna email you, they will leave a review on Google or Facebook or HealthGrades or, or all of those places. And so so really what you're not, you're not in, you know, and the way to solve that is is really way before they get to the review, there's something else that happened um, that we need to fix. Um, so, but basically that's what it looks like. It's an easy, quick thing for them to do. And because of it, they're gonna leave you reviews. Now, three pro tips to leaving reviews uh, or getting more reviews is, um, you wanna have a printed sign at checkout, right? So um, you need to make sure patient, particularly as you launch this as a program, patients need to know that you have it as an option and that it helps you um, and helps them. And so what you wanna do is have a printed sign at checkout, which is you know similar to this one on the right, uh, that basically just says um, something like what you see. How was your visit? Sharing your experience helps us and other patients. Um, and, and it's key to tie, tie the, both of those things in, right? If most patients like their doctors, really maybe in some cases really are very thankful for the efforts they put to them, help them overcome physical challenges, restoring you know life uh, to some and activities. So they're pretty thankful. Um, and so sharing, hey, this helps us, now let's be honest, it helps us, our patients. Um, it helps other people find uh, find us and, and get the get the kind of care that you received. Um, so have a printed printed sign at checkout. Um, you can also have it in exam rooms um, if your practice does that and just asking for a review. And then uh, one of the things that we think is important um, is that at checkout, I know this is adding one more operational piece uh, to the puzzle, which is is you know, a balancing act. Um, but when the, the patient is checking out, just make a note to add to that checkout script that verbally inform the patient that they're going to be receiving an email and text about a review and ask them to leave one. Um, now this this is assuming um, that you your you know sign-in paperwork already has some type of electronic communication uh, consent form. Um, if not, you'll also need that to add to your paperwork um, just to uh, make sure you're in compliance. Um, and you can certainly talk to your uh, compliance folks internally um, or whoever helps you with that to make sure you're compliant. But you will need to have their con patient consent to electronically communicate with them. But again, um, just the the point here isn't to get them to sign the form. They can sign the form at the check-in paperwork. What you want to make sure you do is with a smile, nice big smile, whenever they're checking out, just say, hey, you know, so great to see you guys today. Um, you know, something we're trying or something, something new we're doing as we're, we're, we're in increasing our online reviews. It'd be really helpful for us to, to us and other patients if you would be willing to leave one. Um, just so you know, we're going to be emailing you. You'll receive an email. It's quick. It's easy. It takes 30 seconds. Uh, but it, it, we'd really appreciate it if you'd share your feedback. Uh, and you can leave it at that, right? If they've got more questions, you can answer them. But the goal here is that you really just want to introduce them to the idea of it, make it personal, um, and, and walk. Every group does this a little bit differently. Some only do it at checkout. Um, honestly, what we, we see is some doctors start to do that when they're when they're leaving um, as well uh, as part of the kind of the the end process um, of their time with the patient. They may mention mention something like that, and I think I think that's great too. Um, again, they're 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 willing willing to do that. Uh, 
And then the last thing you, you can do too is just to reinforce this idea of reviews is go ahead and put up a sign in the lobby and in some of them, even in your exam rooms um, that features a recent five-star review. Um, and we're, it's going to be HIPAA compliant, so we're not going to have a last name, but it, it, it can just say, you know, five-star review, and it can, it can, you know, and say, you know, whatever makes your practice shine. But you know, love this, love this group. They always take great care of me, and um, you know, it's always, I always leave with a smile on my face. And then, you know, Tina or, or whatever it is. But again, we're just reinforcing that um, that social proof that confirms to the patients who are in the waiting room that are new, that they made a right choice. And it also indicates this idea of online reviews. And so it's kind of a subtle subtle sale. Um, and then, you know, so again, you leave this, the, the, the sign that you see on the right side here is a printout. Um, you could also make it a handout, they could take it with them. Um, again, the, the bulk of this is gonna happen automatically um, via emails or text messages, uh, but they can go, can go leave it on their own. But the key here is we have to automate it um, or put it into a system, whether that's your EMR is automatically connecting to something, which is really the best way to go, or um, we've got some that we are, um, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a mass sending kind of once a week, that happens too. But again, we wanna make this seamless um, because there's gonna be so many of them. We, we don't wanna have to, um, we don't want you or your staff to take on a whole new, whole new level of effort here to make it work. Let's let the technology do it. So again, you're automating it. But the thing here too is remember, these patients to leave a positive review, they're happy. They left happy. Um, they, they had a good experience. They liked the doctor. They, they liked talking to the nurse. You know, they didn't wait too long. I mean, all, all the positive signs of a, of a happy, happy patient. So the last thing on their mind is going to be leaving you a positive review. Even if they say they will, they're just, they're well-intentioned. Um, they, they really probably don't have the, the thought process to do that. They're gonna walk out and the next thing uh, the, of their day is gonna take over. And so what we have found is that patients need to be reminded to leave a review multiple times. Um, and again, that may sound overbearing. It's really not. Um, it, what we found is often between the third and the fourth message that they take action and leave the review. And so again, in a perfect system, you, you know, you've got a couple of reminders while they're in office. They're getting a couple of reminders out of office. And then at that point, they're taking it. And just think of your own life, right? Um, because we're not giving them anything, there's not, they're not getting anything out of this other than just a, a sense of being helpful, right? So they're not getting, we're not rewarding them with some kind of gift card. They're not, they're not getting any kind of um, inducement to leave the review, um, which um, just while we're on that topic, most of the major review sites significantly frown on on that. Um, I, I think there are there are some options um, that you can can do around reviews. Um, but like telling somebody they're going to get a $25 gift card if they leave a review, um, in most cases will violate the terms of the review. Um, and if they get, and if they, if, if you were to be found out, um, they get caught, um, even unintentionally, they normally just will, will remove all those reviews. Um, and so it becomes kind of for naught. Um, so wouldn't recommend doing anything like that. So again, they're not, they're not getting anything. Um, so that's why it takes multiple. Um, and so again, just think about your own day, right? You, you, you go to the, you go to the doctor's office, you walk out, you're going to lunch, you're going to do whatever you're doing. And then you get an email that says, hey, would you please leave, for, leave, for, leave us a review? You think, okay, great, I'll do that. And then, you know, you get a text message or the phone call or whatever, and you forget. And so then what, what we do is, you know, initial email, then a couple days later, so we'll just say two days later, you get another message. So now they've gotten two in the first week. And then we move to the next week. And then, you know, three days later, they get another reminder. And then three days later, later for that they get another reminder and again these are not intrusive in a world of communication where people are getting hundreds of emails a day you know tons of text messages facebook notifications these aren't overwhelming um, but they're just again trying to keep you top of mind so that they go and leave that leave that review and then again these re re review reminders is really what they are should be sent automatically right so there's no one in your office that's sitting there keeping track of sending these things once they go into the, the software system that handles it, it's a queue and they're just getting automatically sent out. Um, there's nobody actually thinking about it um, from a sending perspective. Um, they're not loading them up. They're just in there and they, they get sent until the, the messaging stream is exhausted or the person leaves the review. And then that's it until they come back in and it starts over. Okay, so review sites that you should um, be on. We already talked about uh, these, um, but let's talk about them in depth for a second. So this is somewhat prioritized. Um, you've got Facebook reviews, you've got Google reviews, you've got health grades, vitals, 
WebMD, and Real Self. So these are the main sites that when you think about reviews, you need to be thinking about getting some on. Um, and we're going to start left and go right. Uh, and really, those are somewhat prioritized. So um, patients are going to find you on Facebook and Google um, more often than not. Uh, and then you know, in search results, they might find Healthgraves, Vitals, and WebMD. Um, but those aren't, aren't honestly always going to be as, as top of mind. Um, it, depending on your area, of course, some of this, it, some of this is regional. Um, some of this depends on that for sure. Um, but in general, you really want your Google reviews to be to be shining, and then moving on to uh, some of these other sites, and then and and like Real Self, uh, Real Self is is very popular with cosmetics, um, so plastic surgery, aesthetic type of places, um, and so um, if you're not in that line of business, then you wouldn't need a Real Self profile, um, but Real Self would be if if you're the other, and it's it's very popular for patients. So those are sites that you need to be thinking about. Don't take active management in the sense that you have to be there all the time. Um, they they really just take making sure you're setting a profile up, doing it correctly, and then responding to reviews as they as they come in. So and then don't forget your own website. This is probably the one number one thing we we see from people is they they work on all the externals, uh, but then they never bring those reviews back to their own site uh, to really showcase it. Um, and so you probably are getting are getting good reviews, but are you really showcasing it on your site? Um, because if patients are coming directly to your site or um, referring physicians or whoever, you want them to see these positive reviews. Um, you want the you want the reviews, um, and, and you don't need thousands of them uh, to be showcased, but you do need to see that they are recent and frequent. Um, and so a review from 2000, um, you know, from 2017, a couple years old, isn't going to be helpful. A review that's a few months old might be, um, but honestly, if we're looking at something, we're going to want a review that's probably at most a couple weeks old. I mean, maybe a few days old, be even better. Uh, and so, you do need to be showcasing those most recent ones, uh, the most recent good ones. So just don't forget your own website. And we're going to talk more about where those go in a second. So best practice for the review sites, and we're going. This is going. This leads us into how do I actually respond? Um, but you want to make sure that on these sites, you claim and and claim and complete profile, profiles for all your doctors. Um, and so making sure that the right information is there, it's pretty common for them to have um, wrong phone numbers, wrong addresses, those kinds of activities. So make sure those are claimed and accurate. Um, some allow you to upload photos, some allow you to change information. They're all a little different, uh, but just go ahead and complete them click, complete them out at least at a basic level so they're accurate information. Uh, and then work to get reviews on Google first and then work to the other sites. A uh, couple things you do wanna do, you do wanna respond. So um, a lot of people don't do, do any kind of response to positive or negative. Uh, that's a mistake. I actually have a, a client who really attributes a significant uh, loss of patient volume uh, to a, a really a negative campaign attack um, through through reviews. And um, they uh, they chose to this this is before they became a client. They chose to just kind of ride it out and just say, well, we'll see what happens. And um, and you know, six months, eight months later. They, they really wish they hadn't done that uh, because they saw a significant, it just it really impacted their practice. Um, and we can talk, I, I, we'll talk about the review later, but essentially it was a really, um, it, the, the review was, was really believable. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't true, but it was believable and that's all it takes. Um, and so we, we have to be careful when it comes to those those kinds of things. And so you do wanna re read and respond. Um, it shows that you're listening and you're, you're active. Um, other thing is you would do want to use some templated responses. Uh, so we've got some examples here, uh, but you want to work with your your compliance team, with your any any attorneys that you have to make sure your responses do fit your practice as well as your practice voice. But we want to keep you compliant. Um, and so the, the nice part about using templates is it makes it easy to respond. Uh, and so any, anybody can do it to some degree. Um, and then on top of that, uh, true, it just keeps you inside of uh, compliance and keeps you from being, um, you know, some of these are pretty frustrating, right? When it's particularly when they're wrong, um, you can get your blood boiling a little bit. Um, and so the last thing you really wanna be doing is typing out a response. You just really just wanna copy and paste one and, and kind of be done. Um, and then big thing here is take all negative feedback offline. Um, this is in any business, get that feedback offline. Um, you do not want someone spilling their guts about whatever happened online. Uh, and two, when they're doing that, and is it really stops your ability to be empathetic and understanding. Um, so they need, they need to be able to, they wanna be heard. When someone leaves a review, they wanna be heard. Uh, and so getting them onto a phone call where they can hear the warmth of your voice and say, hey, I'm sorry, your experience wasn't what you wanted it to be. Um, tell me what happened and they tell you what happened. You say, man, that, I can see why that was really frustrating. 
all those things help overcome it. And, and really there's tons of stories about negative reviews turning back to positive after they've had an engagement uh, with the organization. Um, but if it's all online, that doesn't happen. It kind of just tends to roll. Uh, and then you do want to make sure you, you protect all PHI conditions, patient names, et cetera. So um, respond, make sure you, you really are doing those, those pieces. Um, it, it can be hard. Um, and again, you're handcuffed to some degree compared to the patient, um, very compared to the patient. They can reveal almost anything they want um, and, and you, you cannot, but, um, but that's just the, the world it is. And so we just need to use templates to stay inside of that. So real quick, one of the things you can do um, is if you are wondering about your own uh, rankings, how you appear, how you search, uh, you can do a quick 30 second, easy reputation kind of analysis. Um, just search for your uh, practices. So you know, this is a practice that we work with. Um, you can type in ophthalmologist near me. Um, you can also type in um, a provider name uh, and see how see what shows up. Um, and that will give you a quick, quick and easy way of understanding how are we doing at this. Um, uh, and, and I would definitely recommend you, you do this uh, just to take a quick look at it. Okay, so let's talk about how do we actually, now we've talked about why reviews matter. We've talked about what review sites you should be on, even to some degree what you should be doing. We're thinking like a patient, um, patient's mindset. Let's talk about how to handle negative reviews. Um, cause that's, that's really where, um, uh, a lot of you have questions and that's where honestly, a lot of the, the mistakes happen. So a couple of things to know about negative reviews, as we've seen, uh, from our clients as well as talking to various folks who work in practice management, who work in, uh, consulting industry, um, the majority of reviews are never clinical. They're, they're never about, or I shouldn't say never, they're almost never about actually what's, uh, what's occurred. Uh, they're almost always operational. Uh, they're, 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 they're about expectations that weren't met. Um, examples, I waited too long. The nurse was rude to me. The doctor didn't listen to what I said. Um, those are all, and, and the key to these things is they're all super believable, right? If someone were to leave a review that said something about, I went to go see a doctor and they, they didn't cure me or they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, uh, you know, they, the, what they prescribed didn't work or you know, those kinds of things. That's, that's, that's understandable probably to most people. Um, but these things like I waited too long or the nurse was rude or the doctor didn't listen to what I said. They're all, they're all things that hit us kind of at a core level, um, that, that are all super believable. Um, and so that's, that's the challenge is when those are the things that are happening. Um, as you think about a patient, you have a patient centric mindset, you understand that patients sitting in your waiting room, you know, for a nine o'clock appointment and they're still there at, 9:45, and they haven't seen a doctor yet. That's pretty frustrating to them, unless that expectation has been told. Hey, your your appointment's at nine. Here's what our process looks like. You won't see a provider. You won't see your doctor until 9:45. Um, but if they don't know that, they're they're expecting to be there at nine, and at 9:45 they haven't seen it. And so again, it's it's relatable. And so um, you need to know that that's part of part of the patient mindset. Um, when when it comes to negative reviews, you need to respond to all negative reviews pretty much immediately. So as soon as you can find them, um, you can use software to, to notify you of when they show up as well. Um, and then you go and respond to them and with the templates. But these patients, when they're making a, a frustrating comment, um, it's because they want to be heard. And so you, you, ideally within 24 hours, you would respond with some type of feedback. And, and it's twofold. It's, it's one for the patient itself or the person who left it. But two, it's also for everyone else who sees it. Uh, they need to see that you responded uh, and that you're listening and that you're active. Um, and then about 25% of the positive review you can respond to. So, you know, every, every handful you can, you can have a response that just says, great, thanks. Appreciate it. You know, those kinds of, those kinds of comments, again, acknowledging that you're listening, acknowledging that um, you're, you appreciate the fact that someone's taken the time to, to give you that review. Um, your good reviews, reviews will outweigh the bad for sure. That's the goal. Um, and what we want to get is a constant drip of, of the ideal outcome here is you're getting a handful of reviews, positive reviews every day. Uh, and they're just coming in consistently. And, and all the review sites like this, right? Um, Google in particular really doesn't want you to have, you know, three reviews and then on next Tuesday have 47 reviews. Um, Cause to them that looks a little nefarious. It looks like something weird happened here. Uh, they'd really rather them grow over time uh, and accumulate versus all of a sudden just show up. Uh, and so uh, what you really want is that consistent drip of reviews. And again, that's where the software plays a role. Um, and that's where just doing it as a practice 
uh, as a best practice takes a role. Uh, and then the other thing about uh, reviews is, is uh, this is going to sound weird, but actually negative reviews uh, actually have a positive benefit, uh, particularly when there's only a couple of them, right? And that's that's for two reasons. One, people are research shows uh, pretty reviews. They're really good at noticing the outline. Right. So just think about your own experience. If you were to go to a doctor or a practice or a hospital and, and it said things like um, best group in the area, always have a great experience, you know, waited a little longer than I thought, but still had a really good uh, feedback from my doc. And then there's a review that's like worst practice in the area. They're all crooks. Well, the, the average person is going to be able to understand, OK, there were four really good ones. There was one negative one. And it's pretty crazy. That person. Uh, they're, at that point, they're being, having to make a choice. Is the person who left this crazy or are all these other people wrong? And the normal person is going to look at that and say, okay, great. This person must have had a bad day or even the practice had a bad day and they're going to move on. And so those outliers actually um, make a deal. And the thing that's actually really great about them, which I know sounds weird to say, the thing that's great about them is it actually makes the rest of the positive seem more real. Um, if all the reviews were positive, I mean, just imagine you were doing anything else, um, re restaurant, you know, auto dealer, whoever, and every single car, something inside of you would say, that doesn't make sense. How, how has no one ever been dissatisfied by going to this place? How has everyone's expectation always been met? So actually the negative review, um, as, as much as we don't want them, actually really helps uh, val validate and provide validity that the other reviews are real. Um, otherwise, it all starts to seem a little fake. Um, and so that's what to know about reviews before you go into them. Okay, so here are the response challenges. A patient can say anything they want, anything. <laughs> uh, and you cannot. <laughs> you can't uh, share PHI. Uh, you can't even acknowledge that they're a patient. Uh, and so you're really handcuffed in how you respond, but knowing we have to respond, um, otherwise you're, you're really hurting yourself, we, we have to come up with a solution. And, and so again, that's re responding to all these negative reviews, using templated responses. Uh, we normally recommend having two to three positive responses that are pre-built um, for, for those common common statements like, hey, love coming to you guys, great, we love seeing you. Uh, or okay, we gl glad, you, glad, you, glad you had a good experience. You know, those, so we're building a, a couple Templates for the good. So what are the what are the common good comments you get are? We build two templates for that, two to three. Negatives, we build two to three for that. Um, every practice is going to be different, but most likely it's going to be things real, related to how long they waited, um, um, the attitude of people around them, how they felt like they were treated, uh, and then you know, any kind of particular to your practice, right? Um, you know, had to had to walk too far. Um, you know the elevator did i mean whatever it would be something about you know your practice itself um that is you know, your actual building or your grounds that people may may be frustrated with uh, and then one response for fake reviews uh, and again those are called astroturfing uh, and and really it's where someone's leaving and i've got an example of someone leaving a leaving a, a review that's not it looks true but it's not um and then by doing these templates, you stay controlled. And then two, from an operational level, um, you, you know that you have a, a plan and a process in place uh, and so that uh, we're not worried about the transition between um, Becky, who was doing the reviews management, and now Gina is going to take it over. We're not worried about that switch because we know that there's um, place. Uh, and then taking all negative feedback offline. I know I'm repeating that, but you get that offline. Have a real conversation. Be empathetic. Um, help, help them be heard. And and again, there are people in this world that you right. They are they are they are for them nothing's ever right. Um, and you do have to know when to just say uh, you know we we can't go any further. But for most people, if they're frustrated, they're going to be they can be reasonable if they get hurt. And then protect everything. So here's an example of a negative review, right? And, and how you might respond. Uh, I, I arrived on time for my appointment uh, with Dr. Blackford last Thursday at 9 a.m. and spent 15 minutes filling out forms and another 15 waiting. Uh, this made the appointment a lot longer than I expected it to be. Relatable, understandable, right? They're not saying anything Dr. Blackford was bad. They're not even saying there was anything wrong with the experience other than the fact that they waited. And so a HIPAA compliant response here would be, thanks for sharing your feedback. And, and again, if you look online, you look any place, a lot of these feedback, um, are going to be similar um, because you pretty are you're constrained in what you can say. Um, but you, you basically want to say thanks uh, for sharing your feedback. Uh, you want to talk about what is important to you. Like we keep we try to keep compliance top of mind. 
Uh, and then however, it's our policy to ensure all paperwork is completed prior to the patient visit to their care is coordinated. Do you know that paperwork can be filled out on the patient portal prior? To, uh, and so um, this is actually, um, this example is actually adapted from uh, reputation.com, which is a provider of reputation uh, software. Uh, and and again, and like I said, we, we used they, they're all going to have some level of templates. We can help you write one too. But you're, you're so, you only have so much wiggle room um, in it. They're all going to be, essentially, you want to just convey to somebody, you know, thanks for sharing. You know, essentially, we're sorry that this happened, uh, but here's why it happened. Um, and, and then moving forward. Um, again, here's another one. Dr. Walton was rude to visit and wouldn't answer my questions. My brother's a doctor and I've never been treated like this. The time you left um, and believe it or not uh, we've seen reviews like this um, people reference their own industry connections they talk about the emotion they felt when they left and what you want to do here is just get offline uh, you know we apologize for your experience please call us at XYZ number so we can ensure a better experience next time thank you for your comments um, you, you don't have to say thanks you could just say we apologize and let's you know, let's talk about it but again you want to get it offline sometimes when this happens uh, they'll reply again and say I don't want to talk to you I just want to want it fixed and again you just come back and say you know again we're, we apologize we, we'd love to hear more about it can you please give us a call um, and, and and if they keep doing it that's something people get fearful of is at some point you you just have to stop and you could kind of come back with a cap capping comment um, that says, you know, hey Tina, we've, you know, we we we've tried to reach out to you. Um, and we were unsuccessful. Please, uh, or, or we've asked you to reach out to us. We haven't heard from you yet. Um, you know, we'd love to resolve this, uh, but do need you to take the next step or something along that line. Um, and if it's going to be your last comment, maybe you would include a line that says, you know, we'd love to fix this, but and, and, until we hear from you, we can't. Um, and so. You know, and again, again, people you, at that point, you want people to see your response. You want them to other people who just see that to say, like, clearly they're trying to engage and this person doesn't want to be helped. Um, a, a fake negative review, you know, um, your wait time, doctor wasn't very nice. The wait time was, you know, long and I, I prefer this other practice better. This is a, another example from reputation.com. And, um, you know, and this is, and this is where you get into, because they're actually not, a, they're probably not a patient. Uh, we strive to deliver a positive, you know, show a record of you at our practice. Please contact us so we can ensure it. Um, thank you for your feedback. And again, when you're doing this, again, you're, 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 you're again, there's somewhat of handcuffing, right? So the, the response to some degree is going to feel templated because it is, because there's only so many things you can say. Because remember, we can't do any PHI. We can't even admit that they are or are not a patient. Um, and so here, we're just saying we don't have a record of you. Um, please give us a call. They most likely won't, uh, particularly if it's a fake negative review, uh, but it does allow you to uh, get some better better options here. Uh, and then what can really happen too is, is this is one that we see, you know, it's a mistake review. It's not a fake review. It's a wrong practice. And so this is actually a, uh, uh, um, this is one from one of our clients. And um, and, it, and, it, and it's it's amazing because they 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 came and, and left. It wasn't actually a review; it was a Facebook comment. But uh, you know, the person came and said they you know charged me uh, you know a ton of money for this this one thing from their their perspective. And um, you know, and the practice uh, manager was able to reply and say, "Hey, please call us. Uh, we checked our records and don't have a record of seeing you." Right? And the person then replied and said, "I came here." And then immediately they responded and said, "My bad. It was actually at this other other location." This other this other business, this other practice, and so the great news about it is that it's self-corrected and it's there. People can see it. They can still see the negative, but they can also see the engagement and the fact that then someone went place some was actually someplace else. Um, and so this happens more often than you think. Um, patients don't. They'll, 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 they'll say they went to the diff a different doctor. They'll say they went to a different business. Uh, again, they're just kind of blinded um, by their frustration and they're trying to do. They're trying to leave a review um, and they don't really. You know, they wanted to be the right spot, and they, you know, this this person wasn't trying to leave a review at the wrong location. It just happened to to do that for whatever reason. Um, and so again, this is another one where you have to call it out and and move it forward. Um, one of the big things you just have to again avoid is 
avoid sharing contact inf condition information, avoid PHI, avoid acknowledging they are a patient. So once you've got testimonials, what can you do with them? Yeah, that's the big question. What do you do with these testimonials? So we've responded to the positive, we've responded to the negative, they're there. Now we're getting reviews, so let's just say, fast forward two, three months here, you've got a system in place, you're getting reviews in, um, they're showing up on these places, what else can you do with them? Well, um, you can put these testimonials other places, and, and the biggest place is your website. Um, and so, again, we talked about at the beginning, what do you do? Put them on your website. So um, call them out on your website, place them on the home page as well as actually on provider pages. Um, Format them so they show up on your website and using Google's schema markup so it shows the stars in search. Uh, and then also get new patients from your website by using a clear call to action. And so we'll show some examples. So call them out. Uh, place the reviews on the home page. So um, you can set this to automatically loop um, depending on your software you're using, but have them show up. Uh, it, again, it's social proof to someone who's coming to your site that you're a good, a good place to go, right? Um, particularly if somebody else doesn't have reviews, uh, it can be an indicator that you are willing to show that openness. Uh, the other side of it too is it's just indicating and showing that other people do to come here. Remember, even if you're referred by your best friend, you still have got questions about the group you're going to see. Um, when it comes to healthcare, people are scared, right? There's a lot of unknown. Um, it's normally impacting your life. There's oftentimes pain um, or a loss of loss of something, and so it's it's a it's a as a patient, it can be a scary time. Um, and so understanding that they're looking for anything to help them make the right decision. Uh, and there's also cost involves cost and time and effort. Uh, and so they, they want to understand, am I making the right decision? And so positive views being showcased can really help them with that. Um, so here's some examples. Um, you know, these are reviews of, uh, of Dr. Cook. And then what you want to do is really just mask the last name um, uh, for HIPAA compliance, right? Uh, and so that it's only showing the first name and other. Uh, the other thing about it too, and you'll see this, uh, is you'll, you'll sometimes get, um, depending on your patient age of your population, you will see patients who leave a one-star review and uh, but say positive things, right? And that's more like coming in first at the Olympics. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a kind of a lack of understanding for whatever sense. So that does happen sometimes. It doesn't happen all that often, but it'll be a one-star review and be like, this is the best place ever. I, I'm so glad I found it. And, and again, it doesn't, it hurts, it can hurt your ranking to some degree, um, but people who see it don't <laughs> probably just chuckle because they understand that someone, you know, typed in the wrong thing. Um, two, if you if you format these correctly on your website, um, you will actually show up in search and improve your search engine optimization. Um, so you'll, you'll show up better. And so here's an example. If you see where this uh, arrow points, you can see that the, it's showing the number of ratings up here. And so just imagine that, um, your provider and your site, um, when someone Googles, it shows shows you and shows somebody else. And they, you've got four, five stars and they don't. Again, going back to that social proof, going back to the idea that um, it's just one more difference maker, it, it's just an, a small indicator. It's, it's easy to do, it's automatic once it's set up correctly, um, but it's an area, it's just one more, one more way to be different. Uh, you want to add a clear call to action on your website. Again, we're getting a little more on the website side of things than just reviews, but um, you can increase it by adding a clear call to action. And um, that can just be call us or schedule an appointment today. Um, people online um, respond really well to prompts. Um, and so guiding them through with like a call to action. Here's an example. Request an appointment with one of our specialists. Request an appointment now. Um, you know, best practice, best case scenario that leads to an online schedule or a form. Uh, but it, like I said, it could just be a, a phone number, but again, you're prompting them to take the next step. So it's not just showing them that you have great reviews, it's also then recommending them take that. Um, and then four, you can promote them on social media. So take these reviews, uh, we talked about, you get them on these sites, and then also you can put them on your website, but then also you can take those uh, and, and put them on social media. Now, some platforms will share these automatically uh, to social media. Um, we don't always recommend that because uh, sometimes you don't want all the reviews shared or or they share them automatic, like they share them as they come in. And so your your Facebook feed is then full of full of these. What we tend to do is we tend to curate them. So let's um, let's come up with a plan where we're going to rotate through, you know, the various doctors uh, to actually showcase these. And then you can create a graphic um, like this um, that share as well as showcasing the um, uh, the review itself. And and the really th amazing thing about this is this gets a lot of patient engagement. Um, a lot of times we'll see the patient, um, other patients of the doctor respond and say, this is my doc and he's great, or um, 
you know, I've been going to her for years and she's amazing. Um, and, and so it's, it's creating this engagement on social, just using somebody else's prompt of a review. And again, not really complicated to do, um, but can really get some great engagement. But the kicker here is you have to have reviews to do it. You have to have a review base to actually be able to do this. Uh, and so that's the, the important step. And then, and then final steps, uh, if, you know, your big takeaways from this webinar need to be, one, get an automatic, automated reviews system in place. Um, there's uh, tons of them out there. Like I talked about, um, we, we, we partner with a testimonial tree. Um, there are other places out there that do provide reviews. Uh, and the, the kicker here, or the important step is, try to find one that integrates with your EMR. And if they do, that's a, that, that makes some of these steps a lot easier. Two, go ahead and create response templates. Um, prepare those to be ready. Um, you can work. You can work on them yourself. You can work with a group like us. You can work with your compliance folks. Um, but get get some templates in place, uh, and then store them in an easy to find location. Um, that could be a shared file. That could be a shared doc. Um, it could even uh, even be in an email set, series of templates. But put them in a place that everyone knows who and what to respond to. And, and, and if you need to even create a flowchart, you can't. Right? Somebody says this. Do some training. Somebody says this. This is how we respond. Somebody says this. This is how we respond. Because remember, in the heat of the moment. That's where we make mistakes unless there's training and preparation. And then lastly, go ahead and create a positive review culture, right? What, as you get reviews in, make a practice of actually reviewing those. If people are saying, hey, I waited too long, and you get a bunch of those, I know it's not as simple as, as just fixing it to be faster. But if you're seeing a trend there, well, maybe there is something you can do to, to, to adjust it. Um, if, you're, if you're getting feedback that, um, you know, billing has an issue. Use those as, as points to say, well, what's going on in billing? Um, do, uh, you know, from a from a business perspective, you don't want to assume that all the reviews are completely accurate. But if there is a trend, um, there's there's something happening, whether it's communication or expectation that's not being met. Um, and what else could you do to make this experience better for the patient? We've got some time for questions. Would love to uh, would love to hear from you um, on what what you know what are the burning topics you've got. Um, also, you can contact me at any point here below um, on my email, uh, which is bakerlabs.co, uh, or our website uh, where we have a, a blog and, and tons of other resources to uh, around these types of topics and medical and, and healthcare. But let's let's jump into some questions. Thank you so much, Gavin. That was that was really great. Thank you. Uh, we do have a few questions. Um, if you could review, um, how do I get negative reviews taken down? How do I do that? Yeah. We get this question all the time, and and, and the, the the short answer is you can't. Uh, every platform is a little bit different, um, but one of the things um, ab about kind of these internet giants, uh, Google, Facebook, Yelp, um, any of the review sites we talked about, they're pretty honestly pretty patient focused. So um, they're kind of going to give the benefit of the doubt to the patient. So there's not a lot a lot you can do. Um, normally what we recommend is one, in some cases, the patient themselves can have the ability to go back or the, the person who left it can go, have the ability to go remove it. Um, so if you, if you do come to a conclusion with someone where they, they, they left a review, but then you're able to resolve it offline, um, and, and it feels appropriate, you could ask them and say, Hey, I'm glad we got this worked out. You know, would you, would you mind going back and, and leaving a, a response to the review or even taking it down uh, that said we were able to get this worked out or it was a misunderstanding? Um, so you can, you can do that, uh, but a lot of cases it's going to be in their power uh, to remove that. In some cases, they may not be able to. You know, maybe they're only editable for a certain amount of time and then it's, it's kind of stuck. So in those cases, now if you get to things like Facebook comments um, uh, that aren't reviews, uh, but they actually are just comments, you, you can remove those. Um, we don't normally recommend it. Uh, again, going back to that, the negative helps the positive. Um, but uh, but you but you, it, worst case scenario, you could go do that. Uh, but a lot of times you're just going to be stuck. So again, you go back to that, get creating that positive. Uh, how do we get a positive flow of reviews? Uh, and if you're getting those five, six, seven, ten reviews a day, man, you're going to have plenty of reviews. And, and really, you don't even need that many. You just need a handful, and you're going to have plenty that kind of push those other ones that are negative away. Okay, all right. Um, so what about trolls? What do I do about a troll who's constantly leaving comments that are harmful? Yeah, yeah, and this is again, one of those just hard sticky ones. Um, 
and we had a client that, that had this happen. It was on, it was on Facebook. Uh, there were, there were comments instead of reviews, but, um, the, 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 the client actually shut down a business and, and the, the uh, one, one part of their business that had impacted the community is in. And so they were pretty frustrated uh, and they were unreasonable. Um, they would not, uh, they were, um, people in their life were impacted and they, and they were pretty frustrated by it. And, uh, they weren't quite a troll, but they were darn close to being a troll because um, they would just comment on uh, and really the definition of a tro troll in my experience would be uh, basically someone who leaves harmful or unhelpful comments that are non-relevant all the time. Right. So you post a picture and they're like, you know, you post a picture of a most recent review and somebody says worst place ever. And you post a picture of your Christmas party or your staff outing or, or, or any, any new building, whatever, anything. And, and they reply with something similar, right? They're just kind of constantly um, perturbed and, and taking it out on you. Um, and so if it's a review, um, again, it goes back to your, kind of stuck you can you can you can eventually flag it and send it up the chain um, but again it's going to take some time to to kind of get that worked out um, the best case scenario would be is if they were doing it as a Facebook comment and then you could actually block the person um, as a as an ultimate measure uh, or Facebook actually has a feature where you can um, uh, it's it, it's 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 in a it's in a menu choice uh, with the person but you can basically block the remove block the comment from anybody else seeing it, except that person and their friends. So they still think it's there, but just the rest of the world can't see it. Um, so that's an option too. Uh, but tro trolls are hard. Uh, there's not a really good, clear solution on it. Um, I will mention um, there is some uh, some rising um, some, some rising changes as patients are getting more and more vocal about their experiences. Um, doctors and groups are, are somewhat, um, tiring of kind of not being able to respond. So there's actually a couple of cases, uh, and I am not an attorney, but there's some cases out there where patients have left um, what, uh, left reviews that the, the, the practices are saying are, are untruthful or wrong. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not an expert, so I, I don't know if it's quite slander or libel or, or where it falls in those, uh, but they're actually taking them to, to, there's one that's going, you know, at least right now going to, going to court. Um, the, the, the doctor is actually suing the patient um, or the person who left the review will say. Um, and so I, I don't know if that's the right approach or not. Um, but I, I do think, you know, that's the ultimate, I guess. Uh, that's probably not preferable for any, anybody in any case. Um, but I, I guess at the end of the day, if there was a troll that was devastating enough to your business that you couldn't get a handle on any other way, that, that would be an option. But a lot of times too, you may not know who they are, right? They, I mean, they, they, may, they may not require it to be a real name. Um, so they could just be like, you know, Susie in Seattle. And that doesn't get you very far unless, you know, the company who actually is hosting that review is, um, is willing to tell you who they are. And a lot of times they're not going to be. So um, that's an option. One of the things too on that front is um, what you want to do is you can use your views uh, other places, uh, but you don't want to modify them. Um, um, when someone leaves a review, uh, it's their it's their it's their words. Uh, once you modify it, it becomes your words, uh, and so you, you got to be careful um, that you're not in, infringing on um, not really their rights, but you're not t taking something they've said and making it your words. Uh, you want it to be their their words, um, and really that that kind of keeps the uh, a line of responsibility, even if it's negative, that keeps a line of responsibility with it. Those are really what that's what they said, not what you said. Okay. What about, uh, we have, we have an interesting question here. Um, my patients are older. Do you think they really care about reviews? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I do. Uh, I think they fall in that category sometimes of, of not necessarily always understanding, understanding it. Um, but there, there's a couple pieces to that is, is one, even if they're older, they're still on the internet. Uh, maybe not right. as much as, as you know, a, a 20 year old is, uh, or a 30 year old, but they're there. Uh, and they're, they're engaging on, uh, these, these accounts. And again, they may not completely grasp it, uh, in the same way, um, someone who's more native to it would, uh, but they still use it. They still understand it. Um, they, they, they get reviews and ratings. Um, you know, they get kind of the consumer reports kind of thought process. Um, so they can, they can certainly get it. Um, so yeah, I think it's still relevant to them. Uh, and really to the other side of that is, 
even if your patient population is on the older side, um, if, if you look in your waiting room, um, nine times out of 10, uh, or maybe not nine, but seven times out of 10, they're gonna have somebody with them that is younger, right? So they're gonna be brought in or brought with, um, whether it's a, a niece or a daughter or a nephew or a cousin or somebody, or even just someone from their community, but they're gonna have somebody with them um, coming to these appointments um, who is younger. And a lot of times that person is also helping them with other decisions. Uh, and so even if the, 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 the patient who's older isn't Googling you themselves, um, someone in their circle is uh, and, and is prove, and pointing out and saying, hey, this, this doctor you've been going to, you know, you only, they only have, maybe we should try somebody else, right? Um, because uh, th that's what they're gonna be doing, right? That's kind of their next, their next step. Great, great. Well, uh, Gavin, thank you so much. I think we're just about out of time for questions, but um, we can take more questions uh, offline. Um, we can also um, have questions um, sent directly to you. Um, we can also, um, uh, attendees, please use the contact information on the screen for any questions. Uh, you can also send questions directly um, to us. We'll forward them on. Uh, but do you have any final bits of advice for us? Yeah, I would just say, you know, when it comes to reviews specifically, uh, your patients are going to leave them one way or another. And so uh, how, do, how, do you, how do you get ahead of that curve? How do you help them with it is really uh, the way a smart practice, a modern practice is going. And so um, if you need help with it, like I said, we're, we're here to help. Please, a please ask some questions um, via the, the format um, provided. And then just be aware that there are other, you know, there are resources out there like Testimonial Tree, like reputable places uh, that can that can um, provide some input on this too. But again, we're, we're happy to be a provider of any any questions you have uh, and, I, and a guide as you as you as you try to solve solve these things for yourselves. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So. Um, Please remember, attendees, that your PACOM and PMI CEU certificate will be emailed to you from within two days following the broadcast. There's no need to request it. You can register for future webinars or request a demo of our compliance solution on our website at firsthcc.com or call us at 888-543-4778. And thank you for joining us.